three, two, one. Are we live? Yes, we live. Yes, we live. Are we live, darling? Are we live? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, fabulites. This is Angela with another edition of Notes on the News, where I share with you headlines from my news feed. And I also, hey, and I also share with you my thoughts, ideas, perspectives on the notes, your commentary, the headlines, the subject matter at large, the articles. Good to see you. Good to be seen, brother. Welcome on the chat. Um, but it's not news. It's just my notes on the news. I'm Angela. The channel is be fabulous. You. Like, share, comment, subscribe. We're working on a thousand charter subscribers. Our first 1,000. So thank you for everything that you do to support that. Uh, let us proceed with the notes on the news feed. And as, as my uh, little thing is loading up, I want to encourage you to think about the good news that you have today, what you're grateful for today, what you're appreciating today, what you want to shout out and celebrate and amplify today. And just feel free to, sh to throw that on, on the news feed. We got our own news feed here, so we can talk about that too. Yes? Yes. <laughs> Apple Watch provides murder case clues. So I guess that the Apple Watch monitors like your or can monitor. I don't know if it does automatically or if you have to opt in or maybe you opt out and it does it anyway. I don't know what this technology is doing. It just does what it wants to do and what the, the owners want it to do. But anyway, um, you know, I guess just like a lie detector test will um, evaluate your responses to things like your heart rate, you know, whether you're perspiring, your how fast you're breathing, and then it can kind of, it based on that, it has a theory about whether you're lying or telling the truth. I think that there's something similar to that going on vis-a-vis um, -vis, um, this Apple Watch, and it's monitoring, or in this particular case, it was monitoring somebody, and they use that as part of the evidence in the murder case like maybe when you murder people you know you know something happens and, and that's part of the that's what i think the headline is saying it provides murder case clues hmm hmm so you could choose not to testify on the grounds that it might incriminate yourself but can you destroy your watch on the grounds that it might incriminate you. I mean, I'm just wondering that, you know, this is their system of justice, their jurisprudence system. How prudent is it to wear an Apple Watch or any of these smart things that we have around us? Um, if I, I just mean, if you're planning to murder. No, I don't. <laughs> Does Villanova player Dante DiVincenzo um, get a pass for dropping N-word tweet. Now, this, I think, is a really in interesting conversation because I don't know. <laughs> no, don't ask her. We're not saying her name anymore either. And she's not even a she. We can call her an it, can't we? Or do we have to call her a she? Is it politically incorrect to call her an it when she's had... I don't know. I might get in trouble. <laughs> um... So this is somebody who I think that he identifies as white, Italian or whatever. You know, uh, I think Will uh, I think yes, Willanova just beat Michigan last night. Uh, we're so upset cuz the 2 minutes that I was watching the game, I was rooting for you, Michigan. I think it was U of M. Yeah, it was Michigan. I was rooting for you. But anyway, this this young person who is still in college, so they're still relatively young. They don't want people been digging into their tweets because, you know, we can research people now. Stuff that I said when I was 14, there's hardly any record of it. I might have journals or notes that I passed when I was a child and maybe someone could dig them up and then hold it up to my face and be like, Angela said this when she was 15 years old. But, you know, with Twitter, Facebook, I don't even know if you could use MySpace. That stuff might not exist. But with the digital footprint, you know, it's much easier to access, you know, some of the foolishness 
or maybe it's not foolishness. Maybe it's a deeply held belief that has grown and continued to, to grow and develop into adulthood. But the, the, he seemed to have been quoting a some musical lyrics that said something like, I'm, you know, dunking on these N-I-G-G-E-R's like something, something. I don't know, but he used it. It was in that context, and I think it was like a lyric. And then there was this whole other thing where he's talking about she ain't no good, no good, Sonya. We gonna beat her down. Me and you gonna get together and we gonna get it. We not even gonna call her her because she a it. Um, look, I'm saying she's a it. It's already gotten into my head. Um, so, um, and then he had this whole other stream of tweets about, and I think these are from when he was a teen too, about liking to have his behind his booty hole licked or it was some whole thing I don't know I don't like to me when I read him I'm like is he saying that he's gay but then at the end of the article it's like well how would his um black and gay colleagues or you know co co can they be colleagues when they're children how would his black and um his he's a player on Vill Villanova's team Villanova Villanova the team that just won the um basketball championship tournament that's been going on for a couple weeks weeks I don't know a week or whatever but um his tweets came up in terms of you know people went back to when he was 14 like five ten years ago and some of his tweets some people might find offensive so should he be held accountable for them or do we just like ch you know chalk it up to the game like well he was a child who knows who you know but anyway you know I, I do think that we have to be aware and then also like the cop we were talking about the other day who she just became a cop she became a cop. Now, she was probably in the process of applying to be a cop. You know, people used to call cops pigs back in the day, and cops found that really, really offensive. But I feel like we need another word for cops because I feel like, you know, when they out here executing people, I don't like to use the term officer. When they out here executing people as agents of the state, I just feel like, are they execution? We just need a better, I just, I need a better name. I don't know about you, but I, you know. But um, this woman who became a, a, a NYPD officer before she became an officer, she was out here rapping about, you know, all of these cops out here killing my people. I'm about to put a cap in their head or I don't know exactly what she was saying. But now that was much closer in time to you agree that was much closer in time to when she became you know, but that digital footprint is still out there. And a lot of times, a lot of these cops that are out here and people who are out here doing stuff, it's on they, based on their digital record that we have the evidence that, you know, this is what they did and why. This is who they are. This is so. And then, you know, also sometimes people say those people who are around children and know the children as adults say that you can see the, the adult in the child. So. You know, I don't know. And then we talk about like, you know, this coon situation and like maybe, you know, brother Yapa, maybe you say you're no longer a coon, but maybe I say you are a coon. And then I have on some, I got some new South African earrings out of the stash today in honor of Mama Winnie Mandela, uh, Mandela. But Mama Winnie Mandela is out here saying with a necklace and a match, we can take care of all of the problems. And the necklace is when we put a, a tire around somebody's um, neck, put gasoline in it, I believe, and then light it on fire. It's a way of assassinating traitors and coons and killing them in a very violent public way but also to put that in context this was a time when you know there were so many people being murdered so many south africans being murdered that they were there were mass graves you know being created so we say well we're at war are we at war in that way and are we out here are we gonna kill you know malcolm x as a coon before he has an opportunity to become malcolm x a leader is malcolm x always the coon even when he changes his rhetoric and is able to say the right things and you know it's he speak real pretty i mean how do we you know who who are people allowed to change do they ever really change can we change or are we and then i kind of feel like it's a i already said this but like I feel like for anybody to have any chance of escaping any of this as a black person and have any light of consciousness is a miracle to me 
because I feel like, of course, Define Clark loves light-skinned, racially ambiguous women. Of course, he, he did. And of course, his children, he didn't want to claim the black part of them because he part of this society that hates black people and hates black women. If anybody has any light of consciousness and escapes for a minute to appreciate blackness, appreciate a black woman, appreciate, you know, anything other than rich white men with property and power, I think it's amazing. But anyway... I mean, I think it's all connected. Like, you know, if we, you know, can't forgive him or can't, can we forgive and ignore what he did 10 years ago? Then can we forgive and ignore what you did 10 years ago? You know, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm just asking the questions. I don't have the answers. Um, Israel and Saudi Arabia, the relationship emerging into the open. So some of this, like, um, this conflict over in Syria and all of this is connected to this. Um, they say that there are some Palestinian, some Arab leaders in that region who have embraced Israel's right to exist. And I guess that's like a big deal. I guess that the party line is supposed to be that Israel doesn't have a right to exist. And this man came out and said, um, warm greetings, my sister. Hey, bonafide 1970. Um, they have no intention of changing, not intelligent enough. Um, do we have an intention of changing? Are we intelligent enough to change? Because some of these people, you know, some of these, some of us are, tra are traitors. Some of us have been, I'm one who doesn't look at what a person did. I look at what they do, not what they said, but what they say. So a person who is um, in, uh, uh, agent of COINTELPRO, an agent of the government, but they come around us saying, yeah, I'm here for the people. I'm down for the people. They're saying all the right things. They're marching. They seem to be a part of us. They seem to be here for us. They seem to love us. And at the same time, they're being paid to do that by them or, you know, they're compromised and they might be, you know, sister said yesterday, we don't know the person who, um, not intelligence, but intellectual capacity. We don't remember the name of the person who, you know, drew the map of where Fred Hampton was so that they, those people could come in and assassinate him. But the person who drew the map of where Fred Hampton was, we trusted him. We thought that he was down with us. He was saying the right things and doing the right things. I would assume. I mean, I don't know. Maybe, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not, I don't have the answer and I really don't have, you know, you know, cause I feel like, yeah, put a necklace around them and burn them up. I'm not going to do it. But, but then I don't know. I mean, I'm just as, I'm just trying to explore and analyze and like, you know, go beyond, you know, just my emotion, like the, the way I feel about, so like, oh, well I like him. So he's cool, but I don't like them. So they're not cool. I want to go beyond, you know, like the personalities and really try to understand. Cause you know, I really feel like it, like I just go by me personally. I just go by, I do the best that I can and I figure God will take care of the rest. So, um, I was a very different person before I came in knowledge of self in the early twenties, similar to Stefan Clark, but not as far gone. Thank goodness people do change. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I've, I've, I evolved, I've grown. I mean, I was never, you know, I was raised up a particular way. So, but I mean, I know people whose children were, you know, they, they grew up with locks. And when they reached a certain age, they picked their locks out and permed their hair. Like, you know, their parents was trying, but society was trying too. And, you know, then when you're a teenager, you know, but, or, you know, and some of those people, the children are now, you know, Pentecostal and the parents don't have any type of orientation for that type of belief system, but that's where the children are. That's where their consciousness is now. And so... I don't know. I don't, I really, I mean, anyway, let me just keep moving. So Saudi Arabia and Israel, um, you know, their right to exist. And, you know, it's sort of like, okay, like, for example, the Republic of New Africa. Well, we're, what the Republic of New Africa is talking about, look, I got their flyer here, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina. So, you know, we claim that land and, um, you know, we just let that be our homeland. But what about the people who were originally here? The thing is, we can only make a judgment based on the end of their journey. There will always be what ifs. But our journey is ongoing. You know, our, our journey. Well, right, right. I guess Stefan Clark's journey has ended, at least in this 
incarnation. You know, the body, that body is dead. Now, I don't know what happened, but the body, I think we more or less can agree. Yeah, yeah, the journey here. Yeah. I mean, that's what we have to go on. And our heart, you know, it's like when someone asks you for, for, for forgiveness and says they're sorry and says that they've changed, you know, I, I don't know. I can only go by what I feel and what I believe, you know, and I could be right or I could be wrong. I don't know. Um, And, you know, that's why I guess it's kind of like I would never want to be a part of like being on a jury, like to be like, well, this person should die because I feel like I don't know. I mean, you can show me whatever evidence, but is that all the information there is? I just I don't know. I just I would never I don't you know, I pro I don't know if I would. I don't unless if the person said it, I don't know, because I feel like even if the person said I killed the person. You know, I butchered them, I massacred them. I'm, you know, in my head, I'm like, well, clearly they're crazy. Like something is wrong with them. They need mental health assistance. I'm, I guess I actually don't personally believe there are no easy answers. We can only do the best we can with what we have. Exactly. I personally don't believe, I, I don't believe in like the devil and evil. I don't know. I just, I haven't figured out how to believe in that. And I also don't believe in fear tactics. One of, the, one of the reasons why, or I shouldn't say fear tactics, but I feel like I want to be operating out of love. I want to be operating out of love of my people and belief in the principles that, you know, I believe in. I don't want to be doing stuff like, well, if I don't do the right thing, then they're going to put a necklace around my neck and burn me. If I don't do the right thing, then black folks are going to call me a coon. If I don't say the right thing, I'm afraid of being embarrassed or humiliated. So I'm, I'm, if I don't do the right thing, then I'm going to burn in hell forever. I feel like God knows my heart and I'm just going to, I'm just where I am and it may be wrong tomorrow. I may have a revelation. I don't know, but I'm not, I do, I want to operate out of love, not out of fear of being forgotten in history. Cause ain't nobody going to remember my ass anyway. I don't want to be uh, operating out of fear of being human. I want to be operating out of love. If I don't love it and I don't love you, then I'm not here for, I'm here for who and what I love. And that's it. And the rest of it, you can't, I'm not here for being um, intimidated or scared or threatened. I'm not here. Yeah, he was like, but he was dumb and young and ignorant. You know, like to me, that's how I look at him. Like, and he's a product of this society and he's, I don't know what type of, I feel like he's weak. He was weak minded, but He's what I would expect. He is the product of, he's what I would expect. I don't think that he's exceptional. I think that people who are able to escape are exceptional, particularly if the people around them, um, you know, like, I, like, I feel like a lot of, a lot of, um, to me, you know, the way I look at it, a lot of people who speak the right jargon, who say, oh, I love black people. I love black women. I'm here. I'm researching. When you look at their personal lives, I don't see it like it doesn't look like that to me. So I feel like they have learned to speak a right, the right game, but is their heart really here for black people? If the, if their most intimate choices, um, we've known coons before who have been killed. I mean, we, I mean, he's not the first per. I don't think, I don't know, but I mean, this, we've been in this for, we ain't new to this. We true to this, you know? Um, anyway, I said a mouthful. I don't even know what I said. I'm just rambling and processing and really trying to, um, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm willing to grow and develop and I'm willing to be wrong. And if, if I'm, if, you know, I have experience with the likes of Stefan, you can't tell them nothing. Yeah. And I feel like it's sad. Like, I just, I feel like when you like, you know, when we hate ourselves, I think that that's like, that's, 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 in, that's deep. That's intense. You know, that's, um. You know, I mean, they would drag us down if we if we I mean, the, the most basic starting point is love of self. So, you know, it's like he to me, like someone like that isn't really even at go. And I feel like so many of us are not even at go, you know.
um, it's like we're pre-born. We know we. I mean, I feel like we exist, but do we really exist? Like, are we conscious? Are we like? I mean, if you don't love yourself, are you even human? Like, it's almost like we don't. I don't know. Like, like I feel like when as I as I have come to love myself, I've actually become like a person. Before that, I don't really know what I was. I guess I was like a mass of emotions and confusion and. Um, um oh thank you um that's that can that like and then i'm astrologically who i am too so everybody has an assignment everybody has a perspective nobody's perspective is invalid necessarily i may not be able to understand it but you know but i feel like yeah i don't know and I mean, I don't think, you know, I'm not like, yes, we have to, you know, I want to marry a coon and because, or oh, y'all don't know my people, but if you know the people I'm around, you know, I'm, you know, I don't, I don't have no people close to me. I don't try to be around no foolishness, but that doesn't mean I hate somebody. I just, I feel bad for them. But anyway, I want to go on and, um, cause it's already 20 minutes in, um, Israel and um, Saudi Arabia. So just trying to like piecing together more about what's going on. Um, oh, thank you. Keep praying. Send, send loving prayer for me. Help us help us all get illumination and get connected to truth, more deeply connected to truth and God. Um, I don't hate. I pick. Yeah, it's, it, I, it's and I, I feel like I, I don't to me now, maybe it's wrong, but I don't feel like I feel like Stefan is a part of me. I feel like that, like I can relate to that because I feel like, you know, I have had a process of coming to love myself. And so I can understand and relate to, you know, a person who doesn't, I, I can connect to that. You know, I feel like I wasn't born. Is this retrograde? It is a Mercury retrograde. But I do my lives, I don't do my lives. I love the interaction, but this is just how I record. I'm not, you know, I'm. Florida shooting. Students defy transparent school bags rule. So these are the kids. Um, I truly understand the self-hatred. We are all feeling our way around in the dark in our own ways. I hear a lot of anger, hurt, outrage, and so on. We are very hurt people. Yeah, and, and but I mean, you know, I should say, and we're a very loving. I mean, if you, I don't know. I just think, I think black people are amazing. I just do. I think we, I, like, I feel connected to us. I understand his pain. I understand his confusion. I understand his darkness. I understand, you know, it's like everybody telling you, you know, black ain't shit. You know, he don't know no better. He like, okay, well, let me get in on it. I hate that I, black people bring black days. I can't stand the black hole. You know, I was the man, honorable Lewis Metcalf knowledge of self otherwise I might have eventually led the life of Stephon Clark yeah like I feel like but what's that expression there but for the grace of God goes me we are an amazing people <laughs> that's why we need to separate and I appreciate every time like now I think I've actually had a revelation in terms of the separation although I know it's it's not like my revelation but people have said the separation is mental first and I feel like, okay, you know, because I'm like, separate? How can we separate? But I feel like, you know, we can definitely start the process of separating mentally and like not accepting certain, um, you know, like just, yes, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, you know, it's like, what is the, um, um, where your um, uh, change your, your mind and your ass will follow? There's something like Funkadelic song or something, but yeah, yeah. Uh, Dang, I knew it for a second, but I lost it. It's for our own safety and sanity. And not just for our safety and sanity, but for our joy and productiveness. And like, what are we here for? If we're not here to celebrate and be, I mean, our life orientation cannot be anti-anything. Our life orientation has to be, you know, pro-love and about doing what we're supposed to do. They're secondary. They're, um, you know... We will never separate waiting for others to get a clue. Right. Um, you know, we, I, I feel like we like the whole like we I do it for my haters. I don't necessarily I don't do shit for my haters. Like I don't even have I mean, I don't know who cares. I do it for my lovers. I do it for my family. I'm doing it for the people, for the community, for us. 
you know. I don't care nothing about that stuff. That ain't for me. That's somebody else's mess. So the students, they going back to school, the ones who were at, um, is it Parkland? And um, I guess the new rule is that they have to wear the clear plastic bags. And some of the children say, I don't even think in the context of white people anymore. I only think in the context of black people, black and brown people and African people and my people and my community. Um, and the children said, some of the children, I guess, are defying it. They said, we're not wearing no transparent bags. The issue is not me. The issue, I don't know what they, but they say they defying that rule. And I'm, y'all know I'm here for defiance. See, that's that Aquarius. I have my, my son sitting in the 11th house, that Aquarian vibration. Sometimes I just rebel for just, I'm just here for rebellion. Yes, we can instantly separate in so many ways. Yes. <laughs> and not just like, and we can instantly embrace our wholeness and our validity and our fullness and our completeness, you know, I don't even know if it's about like separating. It's just about being who we are. Just be fabulous you. It's, it's simple. Just embrace that fully and celebrate that fully and acknowledge that fully. Be in that fully. Chanel is under fire for featuring a 16-year-old model, Kaia Gerber, in a campaign that some people think is too risque. Um, I feel like a lot of these... Um, um, we don't need to wait on anyone to do. I don't need anyone's permission to be me fully and fabulously. Authority. I'm writing on authority. I'm the author. I don't need you to authorize me to do anything. I authorize myself. I authorize and I authorize all of you to authorize yourself. <laughs> um. So this whole idea of like you know taking these little um, girls young women, young people, and um, glorifying them and holding them up is like the height of femininity and sexuality contributes to me to like this societal like pedophilia. You know, like we indeed are fabulous people. We simply need to realize that and act accordingly, starting with us. You know, when we do it, we inspire other people to do it. You know, we look at each other. We notice each other. We vibe off of each other. You know, we, we, uh, you know, we we need each other. So when you're doing what you're supposed to do, that puts everybody else. That helps all of us, you know. So do what you do what God told you. Do, do, you're doing the right thing. <laughs> um, so I feel like this whole society, or I don't want to say this whole society, but there's like this thing in the world, society, whatever, about, um, you know, little girl, like, you know, oh my God, a woman has... You know, what kind of woman has hair under her arms? What kind of woman has pubic hair? Oh my gosh, she has hair on her legs. It's like it's a sin, it's a crime. Like, what? what is going on? We're so upset. It's like a big joke. And, you know, prepubescent girls don't, may not, don't have hair on their bodies or may not have hair on their bodies. I knew little girls who had hair on their bodies. But uh, grown women do have hair. So, like, there's this, like, societal thing where we take these little girls and we hold them up as you know the the paragon of you know adult femininity but they're little girls and so we're looking you know like you know there's certain expectations that people have of women sometimes that aren't in alignment that are in alignment with girlhood not with womanhood so I think Chanel should be under fire. I think all of that stuff is some bull. Georgia teacher under fire after telling white students their ancestors killed millions upon millions. And I detected no lie. No lie detected. I, I didn't. I, I, I thought that was really interesting. Um, so the people were upset because I feel like did, 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 were, was there what was the lie? Maybe I'm misunderstanding what the lie is. Telling white students their ancestors killed millions upon millions. This is coming off of Atlanta Black Star. If it's the truth, does it matter if the teacher look white or black, identified as black or white? Let's click on the article and see. White. You think the person was white? I, I understood. Oh, black or what? I, I read white anyway. A Georgia social studies teacher is, fe is facing backlash after a fiery, fiery classroom rant in which she claimed President Donald Trump was 
pushing for a return to segregation and accused white students of being the descendants of European mass murderers. Do, 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 do. No lie detected. Okay, let's keep going. Maybe the lie comes next. Josie Orihuela. Ooh, that sounds Mexican to me. A sixth grade student at Hampton, six, ha Hampton School near Atlanta recorded the 15 minute rant. I wonder if it was a rant or a lecture. I don't know. In February, it's her teacher, Janetta Benton. So we think Janetta. I think Janetta sound black, but I don't know. Is it Southern? Oh, no. What happened to my phone? If she's white and female, she has ulterior motives. My phone, I think my phone just died. I don't know what's going on here. Y'all know I had this old Blackberry. Oh yeah, my phone shut off. <sighs> so what's up with y'all? <laughs> I don't know how long it's going to take. I might have to come back because, you know, even when my phone was brand new, the BlackBerry takes about five minutes to reboot. So I don't know why it shut off. My phone is probably about to die. A black ass berry. I love my BlackBerry. <laughs> yep. But she was, she was, this, she was, she, the, the boot up, the restart function was never her strong point. That was never her strong suit. So I don't know what, what's going on. It's because we were talking, the conversation was all over the place. We got you off track. No, it's my phone. It's, um, I really don't want to get another, another one, but we love your show. That's the whole, y'all make the show, uh, fun to me. But I don't know how long we're going to have to wait. So anything else going on in the news? Um, I'm trying to remember some of the story. The phone has died. It's on life support. Yeah, it's on life support. I call Blackberry she, by the way. You know, I think that there's this thing that, um, like, we call, we refer to cars as women. I think things that we use, we refer to as women. Is that right? I read something. It was like 20, 30 years ago. So um, while we're, uh, you know, just here together, I guess there are a lot of other lives going on, but... What's your favorite movie? Not like, what's your favorite movie in terms of like, ooh, that's a good movie. And what's your favorite movie as in, um, it's just janky, but I love it anyway. Does anybody have a favorite movie? Men have always referred to ships as she, not relationships. But I don't know, it's it's on. But look, now it's preparing the Blackberry Hub. Oh, y'all, oh, there you go. It's back on. King Kong. King Kong, 1933. Oh, wow. Um, what's the next movie, Ayapo? I was watching um, Phone Jones. Um, did you hear about the story of China coming out with the petrol yuan to combat the petrol U.S. dollar? Mm -mm. Hold on. I'm going to get, I don't, you can tell us more about that. But I was watching Phone Jones on Sunday and she was doing a movie and she just had her camera. The, the movie was just playing and we was just watching the movie with her. Now, I don't know how I didn't watch it with her for very long because it wasn't a movie I wanted to see. And I had other stuff I wanted to do more and needed to do more. But I don't know if they're going to come get you and beat you and put a necklace on you for copyright violations. But and then my mother told me this morning, she texted me, she said, dreads on. I'm like, I don't want to see Dread, especially after the people on the, the live was talking about how they didn't like it. But I like being with y'all. That was good. That was, a, um, I liked it. I think you're a great, you have a great spirit for hosting, you know, the people, you know, violent. Oh, yeah. Is that what it was? Violent? Well, when I, when I Googled it, it was like, it was not, um, um, it was not like when it was released to the public, it wasn't like it didn't get a good reception, but then it became a cult classic. But then it was like all of the stars were white and none of the people who I recognized or cared about. And I was just kind of like, and then the story, I was kind of like, I don't know. Maybe, you know, but sometimes you watch stuff and it's good. I don't know much about what's going on with China, but the impression that I have is that, and I don't even know if this is like relevant to me exactly. Like, I feel like sometimes I get drawn into stuff that's really none of my business. Like, 
you know, imperialism. Apparently, this new currency will be backed by gold as opposed to the dollar, which was backed by silver, which now isn't backed by anything. Well, wasn't Gaddafi trying to have a gold backed African currency? But I feel like in the world, the United States was supposed to be like this leader. Leader of who? Leader of what? Imperialistic, colonialistic BS? But anyway, the U.S. was supposed to be a leader, and then now there's like a leadership void, and China is aggressively trying to step into it, I hear, with some imperial, because they over in, in, in on the African continent, hardcore. When my people were in South Africa, they went from, I think, the country of South Africa to Lesotho. I think that's a whole nother kingdom, but there was like, the role was like really something, but the Chinese were in there building and they were talking about putting a golf course in that area like there's stuff going on like where you know the people you know don't go back and forth but the Chinese are there as colonizers imperialists I don't know what they're doing but I bet you it's not for the people it's not for my people it might be for the rich white the rich Chinese people with property and power <laughs> I wonder if the elite elite of the Chinese are white or whiter. The Bible says the wealth of the wicked is, oh, wait a second, is the reserve for the righteous. I think that everyone is building power and wealth on the backs of our people. But that quote is good. The gentleman said uh, the U.S. has really gone down the tubes, particularly since the election of zero. They do not realize that they're actually building for us. Did y'all see sale with Sam Jackson? I never even heard of sale with Sam Jackson. Now, Sam Jackson is kind of a character, isn't he? He seems to be a character. I don't know if he is a character or not, but um, I like Two Can Play That Game, the original movie. It was eerie. I think I like I thought I thought I was thinking um, Yapo Yapa that um, the movie that you picked was going to be something like the Matrix, where there was like a metaphysical like undercurrent story that we could, you know, and I know you had said well, we all, it's, it don't always have to be about, you know, the undercurrent and analyzing it as, you know, sometimes you just want to watch something and kick back. But I probably wouldn't watch that and kick back from what I heard. I don't know. You know, if I saw it, maybe I would have gotten into it, but I didn't hear anything um, that made me want to get into it. We survived the five minutes without the phone. Oh, it was trying to get into this article. So the article is coming off of Atlanta Black Star. So, um, you know, in the headline is Georgia teacher under fire after telling white students their ancestors um, killed millions upon millions. See, the headlines don't be telling, they didn't say white. But you you don't believe that race is a, um, a construct? You believe in race? Our DNA is 99.9% .9 the same as the person next to us, and we're surprisingly similar to a lot of other living things. NASA, NASA, N-A-S-A. Oh... Uh... A very deep but relatively un always outnumbered um Lawrence Fishbourne and you know who I love um Walter Mosley who is the writer he is one of my favorite mixed race he's mixed race but all of his stuff to me I just feel when I read his work I just feel like such a love for the people for the characters and their black people hey my Osha and their black people I love Walter Mosley's work um I, ha I have seen bits and pieces of Always Outnumbered. I think that's a in that character. Um, and I love Walter Mosley's work. So I would love to see more of it on film. And his characterization is so like, it's like he just loves, I feel like he loves the people. Um, also, August Wilson. Yeah, I'm not as familiar um, with his work. Did he do The Colored Museum? Did August Wilson do the Colored Museum? I think August Wilson did the Colored Museum. Um, and if he did, yes, yeah, Socrates, yeah. But if you read, but all, but the um, author of that work, a lot of his stuff would be very wonderful um, in, on film. Um, and that was a good, so I would love to see that on movie night. Um, okay. Um, NASA explores quiet supersonic flight over land fences. Oh, he did fences. Yeah, I thought that was an interesting piece. Now that person, August Wilson, who did fences, if it's August Wilson, he has a series of plays that cover 100 years of black folks. So 
every um, decade he has a play that reflects that's part of like that whole fences is part of a series. Um, and I, I wasn't familiar. Um, I've heard of some of his other works, but that's the first that film is the I've never even seen it on stage. And he writes stage plays or he wrote. I, is he made his transition? He wrote stage plays. So, um, you know, but I thought that that piece was really interesting. Um, in the movie and part of what I thought was really interesting about it is how much like theater it felt you know to be a film like sometimes it works and sometimes it didn't but I thought I felt for that piece it really worked um quiet supersonic flight over land so we've been talking about space but also this merging of outer space with inner space so we think of NASA is dealing with outer space oh a raisin in the sun live when we did um Lorraine Hansberry's um, well, it was not by her, but it was all of her, it was her words, um, young gift to be young, gifted and black. I was just like totally amazed by her. We, there were segments of, um, a raisin in the sun in there, but also segments of her other work, segments of her speeches, segments of, um, you know, her journals. And she just was like to be, have been so young when she made her transition. I was just like awestruck by her insight and her wisdom, um, you know, you would absolutely love it. Very well written, well acted, and dealt with so many issues in an honest and strong manner. Um, okay, so this idea of, talk we were talking about space, like, oh, there's more stuff going on with space, but also space things like NASA we think of as outer space. Why are they talking about doing stuff in, like, in inner space instead of outer space? What's going on? What's really going on? Um, the Purge, Anthony Hemingway to direct premiere episode of USA sci-fi series. I've never seen The Purge. I'm not interested in The Purge, but I'm like, yes, I've seen it in various incarnations, but always on video formats and not live. Yeah, the show, there's nothing like live theater. I mean, a film is great, but there's nothing like, to me, the magic of live theater. Um, yeah, there's like, there's a vibration, like the words are different when they're not um, through a screen, you know, I love live theater. Um, so the purge, I'm like, I don't know nothing about the purge, but I'm like, is this Anthony Hemingway? Is this, isn't Anthony Hemingway connected with my underground? And sure enough, he was one of the um, big people involved with underground. So I remember when underground first went off the air and we were like, you know, probably not y'all, but you know, my people, my underground people, we were like, huh? And then I, whenever I'd see someone from underground doing another project, I was like, uh, yay. But it made me feel like they're really not coming back to underground because they're just moving on and moving on. And now Anthony Hemingway is out here directing the purge or whatever. I still remember the experience. Were you in New York? No more slave movies. I don't, I feel like I love all of, you know, I don't, I'm not, I think it depends, I don't, I don't, I feel like I don't think that the, the subject matter is necessarily the issue. I think that the, how the subject matter is handled is the issue. Like, I feel like someone could be, um, yeah, like I feel like you could have a superhero movie that's some some bull. Um, I'd rather see Blackula. Ooh, Lawrence Fishburne. Um, he uh, I don't know if he did Blackula, but he's done some interesting work. And he's like a Kempo martial artist. So I've been curious to see his work from a new perspective, knowing that I know that. Princeton, New Jersey at Princeton University. I don't know who that was and what you saw, but... Um, yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I feel like I don't I, I don't think that the subject matter is the issue. I think that the perspective on the subject matter is the issue. And I feel like um, I saw the play. Oh, at Princeton, New Jersey, at, at Princeton University. Do they have a good theater program there? Um, that's not one of the ones that pops out a lot of, um, you know, a lot of strong actors that I can think of offhand. Um, Louis, Louisville man tells, hey, Andres. Louisville man tells the tale after opening fire on officers resisting arrest. I think this is the white guy, Buck and the Preacher Man. That title alone is so relevant today. I don't know what it's about, but it is a very compelling title, Buck and the Preacher Man. Um, so let's talk about, or let's, I want to understand this whole subject of, it's no surprise to me 
And I don't even know why we're talking about it. It's about this white guy. I think that's who, what this Louisville man is who pulled a gun and shot Black Western from the 1970s, who pulled a gun and shot um, at the cops. And now he in jail, he alive. He might have a bruise on his face, probably a bruise that he put on his face. They probably didn't lay a hand on him. So people are like, you know, oh my gosh, you know, a black man gets killed just for being black and the white man can pull a gun and shoot at the cops and they're still alive. And I'm like, okay, so we not really shocked by that, are we? I mean, now we can act shocked publicly. We can perform shock, but we not really shocked by that, are we? Like, and so it kind of, I feel like there is a difference between you know, what we know and understand as people who have some sort of consciousness and growing consciousness about the nature of this country. I heard it was a bruise from aiming the gun, right? About the nature of this country, about the history of this country, about the context of this country, about what's typical in this country. Um, there were students from the college, I believe, although I'm not 100% certain. Um, you're talking about the um, Raisin in the Sun production. But if it's well done, it, people don't have to be famous actors. Like there's something... There is something about live theater, unless it's really, really bad. But even bad theater, there's something about, you know, theater people. Um, so I feel like in our inner circles, do we need to continue to have the conversation once we once our consciousness is raised to the point where we understand that this society is not for us. The rules do not apply to us. The, the rules are not for us. The rules will be changed on us. Do we need to keep having that conversation over and over again among ourselves? Maybe we need to keep having that conversation over and over among ourselves to remind us because the the propaganda is so intense out there to keep us in this hypnotic state. I think we are never shocked, but always outraged. And that's how it must be. We must never become desensitized, but never shocked. Um, and I think that there is a thing where sometimes I notice where I'm like, Oh my, like, um, dang, what were we talking about yesterday? Oh, we were talking about taxes yesterday. And I'm like, I've noticed the pattern of black folks having tax issues. I don't, I, I might be missing the white folks who are having tax issues because maybe I don't pay attention. But I'm like, I think the tax system is against black people. And I think the tax system is taking money back from black people. Why do black people keep getting in tax trouble? And it's like, well, it would be consistent with the rest of the society where, you know, the people where things are not for us, you know? So like, why would I be surprised that the IRS and the tax system would not write the entire system? But so it's kind of like bung, 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 bung. Like, I feel like I have to like, you know, kind of stay conscious in a certain way because then I start fall. Like, sometimes I feel like I start falling into like the hypnosis of the propaganda and like the, well, why don't they just pay their taxes and the respectability Claude Anderson write books on how the laws are written in double language. Ah, now I haven't, I think Claude Anderson did some work in Detroit around economics and trying to get a fish farmery here. Um, checking out Angel now. Bye fam. Thank you for checking in, mama. Sonia sees, I don't know what you see, but see, see the light, see the truth, see the love. Pieces. Um, so I don't know, but you know, I feel like I also, like, I feel like outrage, like, I feel like we, I want us to be investing our energy in progress. I want us to be investing our energy in things that advance the conversation and move us along and things that increase our ability to analyze what's going on and analyze our ability to continue to live our best lives and to live our best lives more fully and more fabulously as a people. And so sometimes, you know, I know emotionally in relationships, we can get into loops. Like sometimes we're not recognized as Americans. Sometimes as, as like, if you look at a woman who is in a, like I have had friends who have come to me and they'll be like, you know, this man did this. And, you know, Know, the first time you're like oh my god that's awful well girl maybe um i i know what you mean i think it's just needing us to build with being aware of what's going on around us so i'm like girl i know what you mean you know that doesn't sound right that's not productive do you think maybe that's the relationship you need to be in or you know and we'll have a conversation and then you know at some point there are some people in some situations where i'm kind of like dang we've been having this same conversation for 
you know, a year, five years, 10 years, and I'm kind of done with it. And I kind of feel like until this person is ready to move on, there's not really much that I can, I, I, I don't know what else to say. I agree. This is a shitty situation. So to keep, I'm not going to spend, you know, hour after hour after hour talking about how it's a shitty situation. I think you should leave it, but I don't know, you know, we have to leave, we have to follow her. And so it's sort of like, we should separate like brother Yapo, like, you know, it's a shit. America is a shitty situation for America, for black people because of this. America is a shitty situation for black. It's kind of like setting up a camp in hostile woods. You're pitching a tent, clearing the area, checking for food and doing you, but keeping an eye out on the bears and other stuff. Um, but if we spend so much time cl complaining about, um, it's sort of like you could have, she could have been like, I feel like, now, everybody's process is everybody's process. So I can't tell you, look, you know, after a year of mourning your mother's death, it's a wrap. You can't mourn your mother's death no more. I can't tell you after 20 years of mourning your mother's death, you can't mourn your mother's death no more. I can't tell you that. Um, and I can't tell you how to mourn. I can't tell you how to feel. I can't tell you, look, that relationship with that person ended, you know, move on. We have to follow our own path and you know I I don't know I just know when how I feel and when I'm done I'm done and I've moved on I'm not gonna be you know if it's not working once I figure out it's not working and I can figure out how to get out I'm gonna get out but it may take me 5 10 20 years <sighs> yes we definitely need to strengthen ourselves in terms of our spiritual physical emotional mental stamina and and yeah we are on a whole nother level and i think we need to feed into that and we need to focus on that and we need to celebrate that and we need to magnify that and we need to amplify that you know um so, you know, I kind of feel like I, I read that headline about him, but I really didn't want to because I kind of feel like I think that everybody on the line and, you know, different people come in and out. I honestly believe our ancestors left us a way back to the Bible, but the Bible is rejected by too many. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't personally feel that, but I feel like we all have to. God, God speaks to us and through us all in different ways so while one person's path may be lalabella christianity the bible somebody else's path may be you know yoruba orisha you know i don't know someone else's path may be something else and i feel like i can't tell you what your heart tells you um not obsessed with it or preoccupied with it, just aware of our environment. Like in my meditation practice, you, um, we train, you study, you practice to be alert and aware and observant, but not necessarily like, okay, I'm alert, I'm aware, I'm observing that I feel an itch and I feel the need to scratch. And I feel like if I don't scratch, my arm is going to fall off. But what is an itch? What does it feel like? What's the sensation? You know, what's the, yeah, Lalabella, of course, almost anything you could say is an so I feel like I don't I don't every like Africa we talking about the Bible being an African tradition Africa is a huge continent with a lot of cultures a lot of the cultures and systems have some commonalities but everything that is an African tradition is not for me everything that is an African tradition is not for you so I'm not disputing what Christianity being for you, being an Af I'm not, I don't have anything really. I feel like if if you like it for you, I love it for you. If that's how that, I'm I'm all in favor of it. I don't I don't I'm not necessarily one who believes that we all have to be on the same page all the time. So I feel like if we can travel together and you know support each other and love each other, you know while we do and where we can, I'm all for that. But I don't think we're going to be clones. I don't think we're all going to see the world in the same way. And I wouldn't expect you to see the world. And you know how do we grow? How do we? You know if there's no stimulation, if there's no challenge, if there's no engagement, that's what relationships are about. That's how we grow and develop and become better. You know, so I, I, I feel like if you do that, if do it and do it well and do it honorably and do it, you know, sincerely and do it deeply and do it seriously.
if that's, you know, if that's what you're called to, I support you wholeheartedly, you know, in that. Half of European flights delayed due to system failure. Um, the, the Bible gives many examples how we all go on own ways. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I started reading um, the Bible. Um, you know, I'm not a student of the Bible, um, you know, because that but I don't I'm not mad at anybody who's a student at anything. I appreciate people who understand things and study things deeply and live them. People want to change, but don't know how to make the change. Yeah. But I feel like if you feel that you have a path and a system, I, I how whole I feel like it's important for you to follow that path and that system. And then maybe that will bring light to other people. People will look up and be like, wow, my OSHA is so, you know, she's such a model of truth and light and love. She's such a model of this. What is she doing? I want to learn more. I want to understand. I want to let me go over to Sister Myosha and ask her to help me, to guide me, because I feel like a connection to her vibration. I feel like, you know, so I feel like that's where our responsibility comes in to when we do know and what we do know to like honor that and celebrate that, engage in that deeply and seriously and sincerely, you know. Um, and, and I feel like we don't have to wait for other people to be, I mean, we can get on that path and we'll find like-minded people along the way. You know, we don't, nobody has to authorize you to believe what you believe. You believe what you believe. That's what God told you to believe. Um, so the half of the European flights were delayed due to system failure. I think that this is some hackation. We've been talking about this hackation thing. I think this is some hackation thing. Um, Trump Russia inquiry, Dutch lawyer, Alex Van Der's one sentenced to 30 days. This is um, with the um, the U.S. government, um, Mueller, all of that. Somebody has been sentenced. Yes, we can allow ourselves to become overly pro preoccupied, obsessed with our environment, but most definitely um, very much aware. I think of it kind of like playing a game, you know. Like if I'm like if I'm playing a game with you, usually I'm kind of competitive and I'm like all in, but I know it's a game. Like, I feel like a lot of this stuff to me, I don't want to say it's a game. I'm not trying to say it's not serious, but I feel like, um, like we've already won. So if there's an illusion to the contrary, I'm not really, I don't want to get too like deeply engaged in that. Like if I'm playing, you know, cards and you know, my hand ain't good. I don't want to like read too much into it. Like, Oh, this means that I'm a loser or whatever. I just, I just want to have fun. I want to like, you know, um, black lightning renewed for season two. And here's why you should watch. Do you watch Black Lightning? I started watching Black Lightning and I really like it. I like the Black family. That's why they say you should watch because the person who's writing it is like he really wanted to just write about a Black family trying to engage in the Black community. But it's a superhero story. So the guy had to have superpowers. But he's really more interested in the family dynamic. And that's kind of like what I feel. I feel the family and the community dynamic. When I watched the show, I was kind of surprised by it because I'm like, it's a superhero show. But I like it. Do you like it? Have you watched it? I like Black Lightning. I, I, I did start reviewing it and I am going to finish reviewing it, I think, if I have time. Um, so they were renewed for season two and that's even more motivation for me to, um, you know. Dear Lil' Kim, as in the rapper, Lil' Kim, not Little Kim, but Lil' Kim, given your history with domestic violence, you're dead wrong for caping for fabulous. F-A-B-O-L-O-U-S, not F-A-B-U-L-O-U-S. Um, I, 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 I thought that, that this whole conversation about is, is fascinating. One, I wasn't quite sure who Fab, Fabulous was and um, Emily B. I think it's Emily B. Um, but I did, I do remember now from when Love and Hip Hop first started, she was the one who was dating the guy who was famous. And she was like, I'm dating this famous guy, but he like never claimed her. And I'm like, oh, that's sad. And she's like very, very light skinned, big booty, big breast, uh, racially ambiguous. I'm like, she's the prize. Why wouldn't he claim her? That's Ain't that what they all want? Or not all, but you know, I, why wouldn't he claim her? And, you know, I it, that, like the whole thing, I just thought it was really sad. Like her sense of herself and her value and her worth. I was just kind of like, oh, 
that's sad to me, you know. And so, like, now, years later, hearing, you know, this whole, I haven't really studied deeply the whole domestic com violence conversation, but I was kind of like, oh, it kind of fits the profile of the vibe that I got from her and the whole, like, she was, like, all excited they were going to take a family portrait and he was supposed to show up, and he didn't show up for her for the TV. I'm kind of like, dang, how are you relating to somebody who can't show up for you and support you? I guess we show up and support each other in different ways. So, but you know, I was kind of like, it don't feel, I'm not feel, I'm not getting a good feeling about this, but you know, I don't know. It's just the TV. But, um, I think that it was, I thought this title was interesting because a lot of times those of us who like, when you are a lot of times, the, like the biggest, the victims are the ones that maintain the system the most. So if she has, I don't know anything about Lil' Kim's history with domestic violence, but if she has been involved with domestic violence situations, I don't know who abused her and what that situation is like. But a lot of times somebody can be perfectly nice, you know, to their next door neighbor and to the community and then go home and be somebody's behind. It's not like a, it's not mutually exclusive. Just like we have serial killers and people will be like, I live next door to him. He was so nice. Like it's mutually exclusive. Like, you know, I, I don't know. Like, I don't even, or like, well, I didn't see him hit him. So hit her. So he never hit her. Well, you only saw him for a couple hours a day if you saw him for a couple hours a day. So how you know? And I think the people who have been, you know, physically abused, you know, they're, they're, they got issues. They beat down, you know, even if they, so I feel like it wouldn't surprise me at all if, you know, she would be the main one being like, he didn't beat you. You ain't shit. Cause she feel like she ain't nothing. If you want to be in a relationship with someone, you've got to respect yourself first. Right. The first relationship, well, our relationship with ourself, I don't know if it's our first relationship, but it's important. <laughs> That's a big, important relationship. We have to come as whole people to relate to other whole people. I don't know if we have to, but that's that's the vision to me. Um so I don't know what's going on with this whole, you know, I saw some headline that was saying that, um, you know, the support of fabulous Bill Cosby and um, the Pied Piper who like to pee on little girls and, you know, and that whole conversation about the Pied Piper and training girls and nobody talk. I haven't heard anybody talk about the whole S&M community. I'm like. OK, but anyway, the, the, our love and support of those people, not me personally, but as a community is not about our love and support of them, but our hatred of women and of black women. And it's like if somebody is dogging out, you know, and I don't, I don't know if we count Emily as a black woman, a brown woman, what we count her as. But anyway, I just thought that whole title, I'm like. A lot of times people who have been abused are the worst, you know, just like black people. People are like, black people can't be racist. A lot of times we the worst ones. I don't want nothing black but an Xbox. Black women bring black, black days or dark women bring dark days. And then our ass gets shot on the street by a white cop for being brown or that's allegedly. So, I mean, he hadn't, I mean, he's a victim. He, his He's, he's so abused and crazy and sick. His analysis, I'm not counting on somebody who is in distress for their like great analysis and emotional um, sobriety because we in too much pain to be emotionally sober. I ain't counting on Lil, Lil Kim for analysis. Um, Fort Moses, Florida, an escaped slave's promised land or an escaped slave of, uh, I don't like enslaved, but slave, whatever. Um, I, I heard about Fort Moses in a children's book. I hadn't really, I wasn't really familiar. <laughs> I don't want nothing white, but a why. <laughs> um, I, I think this whole, um, I'm curious about the history of Florida because it seems like there's like a lot of hostility there. But like Florida once was a place where, you know, when we were thinking about leaving, some people went south to Florida instead of north because it was closer and because of the whole French Spanish freedom, you know, it was like a uh, so. And I just think that there's like a lot of interesting things that have gone on on Florida land. So I, I just it just makes me curious about Florida. 
So if you don't know about Fort Moses, check it out. It's an interesting situation. David Ruggles, an aggressive abolitionist who would force his way. Hey, Sister Mary Jane, who would force his way into the homes, into homes to inform slaves that they were free. OK, so let's talk about this title. First of all, if the place is a, a, a prison where there are enslaving people and holding people against their will I'm not, I don't want to call it a home I want to call it a prison so he would force his way into prisons and tell those people that they were not enslaved they were free now was he telling them that they were not enslaved that they were free because they mentally didn't know it like how Harriet Tubman is like black people in the U.S. can't be racist we can be bigots or prejudiced but by definition we can't be racist because we don't have a system to support that and so if I use the word racist I don't mean that but I mean Black people hate black people as much as white people hate black people because we have been indoctrinated into the system of hating black people, women, poor people, anybody who's not a rich white man with property and power. There's like a, a systemic hate and tearing down of those people. And I feel like we're just as much a part of that. Like if I'm a black cop, I can I'll shoot a, a N.I.G.G.E.I. as quick as the next person will, more or less. You know, like I don't that's so that's what I was trying to refer to. Um, no, I don't think that we have the um, <laughs> we're not in that that power position. Um, Self-hate and or prejudice. Um, so, yeah, if I misspoke or, you know, I don't even know if it's misspoke, but I do understand that concept. And I agree. I don't believe in like reverse racism and all of that, you know. Um to inform slaves so Harriet Tubman is like I could I freed a thousand slaves although I think the, they say it was like 300 or 25 or whatever I freed they the quote goes or what I've heard is I freed a thousand slaves and I could have freed a thousand more if only they knew that they were slaves so I don't know if David Ruggles was like hey you're not enslaved go on and leave don't be letting nobody hold you captive fight leave don't be standing up here participating in this system I don't know what the situation. I always jump on that because white people. Yeah, I, it's good to jump on it. It's, I think consciousness is good and what we say is important. And, you know, our language is important. And, you know, I think that we need to continue to refine our language because our language is deeply connected to what we think and what we feel. And we're, you know, this language is not for us either. Just like you know, the housing system isn't for us and the education, the language is not for us either. So we got to, we have to use the language for us and we have to, you know, continue to, you know, to shape it and shift it and mold it and make it, you know, work for us at the same time that we in Ethiopia learning some other languages so that we can rewire our minds and our hearts and our, our consciousness. I know people that hate their own race. Yeah, we all do. Have you been to uh, America? Have you met any black folks? <laughs> um, oh, I feel like I do. And we show it in big ways and small ways. And sometimes, again, we talked about it earlier. We can talk a good game, but in our actions and in our personal, we might be sophisticated enough to talk a good game. But in our personal choices, we you know, we, we show what we believe and what we value. You know, it's it's all we you can't hide it. You can't over talk who you are. I can't hear you because your actions are talking so loud. They're drowning out your words. Um. So David Ruggles, I want to know about him. I like somebody who's aggressive and bold. That's probably the cancer in me. <laughs> Tech giants. In Intel's diversity report shows Silicon Valley still struggling to hire black workers. I don't think it's really a struggle. Like, I feel like if you wanted to do something, um, you know, in your corporation, I, like, I, I feel like I've worked in organizations before. If you want to change something, you can. So I just don't think it's sincere. Um, meet the Ethiopian man who walks on his hands. And I just thought it was so like, you know, there's this thing on Twitter where or wherever where they talk about black boy joy. But anyway, I just thought it was it, I, don't, I don't like the black girls rock and black boys and black girl and boy. I don't care unless we talk about little boys. But this is a man. Um, but he was just like it's like it just seemed like he just enjoyed that. Like it's like a hobby, like, you know, and he's like perfected it. And I think it's so cute.
Yeah, I don't know who who saying that is. It's not mine. It's not original, but um, I like it too. Because if you shut up, or, or I don't want to say if you shut up, but like I learn, especially when I, you know, in dating, like you know, just watch people. People show you who they are. You don't have to worry about what they say. Although I love somebody who talks, you know, I love pretty talk. But that's why I really had to like just really watch people and pay attention. Who we are is is written all over us. <laughs> it's all over us um so I, I like the ethiopian man who walks in his hands because i figure that's his passion that's what he enjoys doing he's uh excelled at it can you walk on your hands i bet you you can't and i like him she's latina but she says she's white now my understanding of latina is that it's a combination of european which is white native and African and some people might be Latina and they might have for the most part European ancestry Some people might be Latina and for the most part have African ancestry Some people might be Latina and for the most part have or Latino and for the most part have You know native ancestry and then people have different combinations of those things um, That's my understanding um, Just like in this country um, Latin people are mixed with everything, but I don't know if every, like in this country, you know, I feel like we're mixed with a lot of different things and people have different mixes, but you know, I don't know. And then I just, I, yeah, I don't know. I just, I kind of feel like I haven't had my DNA done. I don't know if I really believe in DNA. I don't know. But, you know, when you, I like to watch the DNA videos on YouTube. I think they're fascinating. And so when people are like 85% um, of African descent, she hates being Latina. Yeah. Um, well, God bless her and pray for her. And you celebrate and enjoy being who you are. And maybe it's contagious. Or maybe, you know, I don't know. Um Maybe her lat, you know, I don't, yes, people, some, we got issues. It's so much hate toward all kinds of stuff that people have issues. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. It wasn't nothing. Um, okay. Texas officer indicted in brutal beating a black man who was just waiting for his ride at the hospital. So it's another one of those situations where the man, and we, I was talking about that with my mother, the fact that these people don't get any, um, again, like clarity about how the system works. Perjury is like, if you are off, if you a cop and you out here lying, we never prosecute these, that we, not me, but this system never prosecutes them for perjury or when they lie and they lie on the reports. They lie in their statements, they lie on the stands, and then the videos come out, and it's just like, oh, there's never any, like, loop back to hold them accountable for that, because they're doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. So the man was, um, you know, waiting someplace for a ride, and the guy is like, oh, you know, I'm afraid for, oh, wait, let me get my tape recorder. I'm afraid for my life, so I had to shoot him. Um, but then the tape came out that showed that the man, you know, that he lied and, you know, so SSDD, um, he brutally beat the person. Um, I've really been thinking about this whole shock and awe thing. And like, just not being shocked and awed, like maybe I should just not be shocked and awed, you know, I don't know, am I becoming desensitized, because I feel like, yeah, I don't know, I feel like, what's the, when, when they just out here trying to, like, just, and part of the shock and awe campaign is to make you feel like you can't fight, to make you feel like the battle is already lost, to make you feel like you should just give up, like, oh my god, these people are crazy maniacs, and they'll just beat you on the street just for waiting for a ride, they'll just beat you for being black, they'll just, lynch you for being black they'll just shoot you for being black they can just do whatever they want to do and we can't do anything so we just can't do anything we just let's try to make sure our pants are pulled up let's try to make sure that you know we have our ids on the dashboard when we're driving let's try to make sure that you know we say yes sir no sir let's try to make sure you know uh, that shit ain't gonna i mean that stuff ain't gonna work uh the cops and the courts are two wings of the same wicked bird of prey that stuff ain't gonna work uh, so, 
you know, me and, you know, it's like, I feel like it's having the effect of us feeling like respectability, you know, like you have to do things right. If you do think, if only you do things right, you can survive. And I feel like our spirit survives. Now our body, our bodies ain't forever anyway. But I think that's where, you know, looping back to bona fide 1970, I feel like that's where each of us individually and um, 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 Myosha, that's where each of us individually has to do our work. You know, our work on our spiritual and emotional growth and development and where we have to walk those paths hard and true and sincerely so that, you know, we see through and, you know, we're not... Um, you know, buying into what's not good and what's not God and not distracted by it. Um, but yeah, I feel like I don't want to be shocked and awed anymore. I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be, um, the prophecy says that the most high will gather us once we realize who we are and rebels will be purged out from among us. I just thought of a way the law enforcement can save a lot of time. They should start printing all the, um, <laughs> incident report, resent, right. Pre-print them. <laughs> I was afraid for my life. You should, you should send that over to them. That's what um, I believe is happening, that rebels are being purged out from among us. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe. I, I don't. I definitely think that there can be a lot going on that we don't understand. <laughs> and sometimes what something appears to be is not what it is. I definitely believe that. And I also believe that, you know, as much as we can see, like this concept of the tip of the iceberg, there's so much more that we can't see. You know, there's so much more that we don't understand. Like, you know, so. Um, full, um, Fiji prime minister, climate change threatens our survival. Now in Fiji, they're having, I think it's cyclones. They're having cyclone after cyclone after cyclone after cyclone. They are really experiencing the brunt of this, what some people are calling, um, <laughs> thank you, what some people are calling global uh, climate change, global warming, climate change, whatever. Um, so, you know, they're developing some strategies, I guess, because they're on the, the front end of it. French mayor regrets April fool joke on Ikea coming to town. He like, yeah, Ikea come to town. We gonna have all these jobs. And people are like, woo! And he like, uh, April fools. And they didn't think it was funny. So now he regretted. These April Fool's jokes are something. When I was a child, I would tell you this April, this is one April Fool's joke. This is the only April Fool's joke I remember. My mother said to me one day, I was a theater person. She said, we're moving to New York and you're going to go to the fame school. We should only practice respectability and accountability product, product politics with one another not with them oh i never even thought about that my mother said we're moving to new york and you're gonna go to the fame school i can't i don't even remember what it's called now you want but anyway and i was like oh my gosh this new york i was so excited and then later on she told me it was an april fool's joke and my heart was just broken and my dreams were shattered and i've never been the same since and i'm joking now <sighs> But I have a little tear. But actually, it did kind of hurt my feelings. And then the other thing that my mother did that hurt my feelings, there are two big things I remember when I was first learning to play cards. And I don't know if y'all know what a Boston is. But, um, you know, I was playing, we, you know, we were playing cards and it was like time for me to go to bed. And my mother is like, well, you know, the school of performing arts, my mother is like, well, you know, you should, you know, y'all go on to bed and, you know, I'm gonna pack my bags, you know, pack your bags. And I'm like, huh? And she's like, yeah, you going to Boston. I've never become a good card player, but I love when we play cards. When people play cards, they be like, ow! That's all I like to do when I play cards. Whatever I have, I be like, ow! Like, I try to act performing arts. I try to act like I have a good hand and like I know what I'm doing. Because that's what always looked fun to me about people playing cards. All of the BS people were talking. Um... Malaysians roast master chef over chicken dish. So there was some chicken dish somebody made. It was like a, 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 a the dish of the Malaysian people. Like I thought of it like this. Like I never knew about nobody putting um, breadcrumbs on mac and cheese until I was grown. Now it may not be some white people stuff. I don't know. But I, I've had 
a gazillion mac and cheese dishes and I ain't never heard of nobody making mac and cheese with breadcrumbs. So to me, it was like if somebody was on MasterChef, a black person was on MasterChef and they made macaroni and cheese and the master chefs were like, well, I mean, your mac, your mac and cheese would have just, it just needs breadcrumbs. Mac and cheese always has breadcrumbs. So they were saying this particular dish, this chicken dish was supposed to be crispy. And the Malaysians are like, uh, no, this, they say, oh, your chicken dish would have been good if it was crispy. Um, your satay chicken or whatever. I don't know what the name of the dish is. They don't have it on the headlines. And Malaysian person after Malaysian person is like, uh, no, that is not how we make that dish. That dish is like a stew. It's basically a stew dish the way it's the spices and how they interact. And no, you should not be out here talking about other people's culture when you do not know what you're talking about. Carbs on top of carbs. I love mac and cheese and I have a, a, I started making it when I, as I became, you know, kind of got out of it with, um, you know, whole grain pasta and, um, organic eggs and cheese or whatever, but it ain't, you know, I don't hurt like, and then people will be like, Oh my gosh, make your mac and cheese. And it's like, I really only want to make it like once every two or three years. And I'm not going to be making it every month for the family gathering. And then the, the people was coming from the outside and they try to get out, just try to make a small dish of it. Cause I'm like, we don't, this ain't no high quality food, even though I try to make it high quality, but yeah, it ain't, it's good though. I love, I don't eat it hardly, but I still like it. But I don't hardly eat it. But yeah, the Malaysians roast master chef. The imperialists come and try and tell everybody how to do what they do and what they got and how it's supposed to be. Winnie Mandela in six quotes. So we talked about the one quote where she said, um, you know, all we need is a necklace and a match and we can get stuff straight. That's not a, a direct quote. Don't 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 quote me on that. Um, but um, Indonesia declares state of emergency. I'm going to let the article come up with the mini Winnie Mandela quotes because I want to say it for what it was. Indonesia declares state of emergency as oil spill spreads. I used to love broccoli on my mac and cheese. Now, it's something for me about broccoli and cheese. I just, I love, I love broccoli, but I cannot do broccoli with cheese, like conceptually. But, you know, I'm like limited eater. That's what my friend used to say. You're a limited eater. I'm a limited eater. So there are just some, like for a while, I could not do watermelon like yellow and orange watermelon i'm like i'm not eating that watermelon it's supposed to be red like so you know yeah i'm sure it sounds good to everybody but just to me i'm just like limited i'm limited so you can't expect much from me i'm limited <laughs> okay winnie mandela in six quotes on what prison did to her um, the years of imprison imprisonment hardened me. I no longer have the emotion of fear. There is no longer anything I fear. There is nothing the government has not done to me. There isn't any pain I haven't known. That's intense. That's that. I thought that was really um, on how black people will receive will um, achieve freedom. With boxes of matches in our necklaces, we will liberate this country. On loving Nelson Mandela, I had so little time to love him. And you know that she was, they were, she, he, they were, he was in prison for most of their married life. Um, I think they were married for 38 years and he was in prison for 27 or something. So they had like 10, but you know, under stress and duress. How do you have a, it's going to be an abstract love. It's not going to be like a practical day-to-day -day relationship, really. And I guess, you know, some of us don't have the luxury of practical day-to-day -day relationships. I had so little time to love him. And that love has survived all these years of separation. Perhaps if I'd had time to know him better, I might have found a lot of faults. But I only had time to love him and long for him all the time. On why she kept the Mandela name after divorce. I am a product of the masses of my country. I am the product of my enemy. Now that's deep. I was so upset when they got divorced. People say she kept the name to capitalize on it. On women. The overwhelming majority of women accept patriarchy unquestioningly and even protected. This is what I was talking about with Lil' Kim. 
working against the resultant frustrations, not against men, but against ourselves. This is what black folks do, too. Instead of being mad at white folks, we be mad and attacking ourselves and each other. Instead of being mad at the system, we be like, why didn't he have his pants pulled up? Um, not against men, but against ourselves in their competition for men as sons, lovers, and husbands. Traditionally, the violated wife bides her time and offloads her built-in aggression on her daughter-in-law. So men dominate women through the agency of women themselves. On ANC and government. Um, when my mother came back, she has all this... Um, red black green and yellow stuff or some you know and I, I noticed as we're seeing a lot of the footage of of um, the Mandela's and she says that those are Zulu colors I didn't know I believe something is very wrong with the history of our country and how we have messed up the African National Congress so anyway those were six quotes from uh, Mama Winnie Mandela that um, he agreed to keep the system in place. And then I always wonder, because I think, I can't remember who it was from the Black Panthers in California who went into jail, and then they say when he came out, he was not the same person. But I feel like when the people are in jail, are they beating them? Are they drugging them? Even when we're not in jail, you know, you don't know, you know, your comrade, your husband, your sister, your brother. I mean, it just seems like they could be affected in all different kinds of ways by all different kinds of things. We don't know. They shift who they are, you know? So I feel like he was locked up for 30, 27 years. I mean, they do experiments on regular prisoners. They they do lobotomy. They do all kinds of stuff. So what makes you think that they wouldn't? I mean, I feel like he's way more powerful and effective. Like as a dead person, he is like, oh, my God, they killed Nelson Mandela. But if he come out and he'd be like, yeah, I'm here to help the white people keep their land, then it like confuses us and it throws us off. There's probably some word for that strategy in the in the the warrior, the, in the warfare. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what it is, but there's pro that's probably like, you know, we know divide and conquer. Now I know shock and awe, um, maybe got depressed. Right. Wouldn't you be depressed? depressed angry demoralized um no shade to melson i heard he was beaten almost daily right that's no shade i'm just saying his decision was to keep the system in place right and you don't know you know they might have said look if you don't come out and say this we gonna kill winnie and the children i don't know i don't know i don't know i don't know why you know which is why i feel like we cannot be it has to be it's, we have to be beyond we have to continue to develop intellectually and emotionally and spiritually so that we can see through to and be loyal to truth. You know, because people, we're vulnerable to all kinds of things, you know, but truth is just truth. It's not, you know, truth is just truth. You know, you can't, you can't kill the truth, <laughs> you know, you know. Indonesia declares oh state of emergency oh, as oil spill spreads. It's another we, we this is the second image we've seen in the last couple of months of something on the water, just fire, you know, the oil spills, this whole oil industry. I don't really understand, but the smoke, it just looked awful when I was down south on that um Gulf Coast, all of those spills and the chemicals and that whole it's awful. And then we just saw one, I think it was China, was it Asia? I can't remember where it was, but there was another one we saw burning out there you know mess and confusion um china family finds lost daughter after 24 year search being in jail changes you hell yeah being locked up and she said i thought that quote that she said at the beginning that just made me like i mean in a way i guess i feel like it's good to um, not be afraid of anything. She said she wasn't, or I heard her say she wasn't afraid of anything because everything has already been done to her. I guess she's been raped. She's been beaten. She's been tortured. She's been locked up. She's been, I, I don't know. What else can you do to my body? I guess that's what she was saying. That's how I heard it. And that's like intense, you know, to me. 
Um, so the China family, they like he was like somebody who worked like on the street selling fruit. And he turned around to his friend to get change. And he turned back. His three-year-old baby was gone. Couldn't find the baby. Where's the baby? Not being in jail and under oppression does something to you, too. I can't imagine what happens when you're locked up. And we are, I think a lot of us are, are locked up, you know. I think a lot of us, most of us are locked up. You know, and it's, it is different. I think there's a difference between being physically locked up and, you know. And, you know, I feel like there's a difference also between being a, a, a mental imprisonment and also like, you know, the violence that, you know, you have just as a, as a black person in this, this society. I think that's a little bit different from somebody beating your, beating you. You know what I mean? Like, I've never had anybody beat me, but I feel like I've experienced the violence of this society on some level. But I'm sure it's not the same as somebody beating me, you know? Um, I mean, I feel like even as a student on campus, I remember feeling like, you know, oh, my God, it's so racist. It's so awful. And I remember hearing when the, when the male students were talking about how coming off and on campus, they would be asked for their ID. And I'm like, nobody ever asked me for my ID. I come on and off campus all the time. So that's like a whole nother level of assault that I was just not aware that somebody else was experiencing. And the black men, that was like, kind of, I'm like, I did not know. Um, but that changes you, that impacts you, that shifts you, that, that, you know, affects how you feel, how your body feel, how your spirit feel. Um... So he was he, the man, this is the Chinese man with the daughter who'd been missing for 24 years. He working on the street selling fruit. He turned to his friend. He turned back the three year old baby is gone. Where's the baby? Where's the baby? They look for the baby. He um, became, ended up becoming a cab driver. And he would have a picture of the, um, the spirit of Winnie Mandela lives on in Julius Malema. Okay. We have to, look, I have to, I don't know much about Julius Malema. Um, but we have to, you know, he put the picture of the, of the child in his window. He didn't have like a uh, uh, projected how she would look. But they say the sister looked like her. So he put the everywhere he drove. He all over. He had a picture of the child, you know, missing, 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 missing. They got a lot of leads. They find people. They DNA test them. That's not your baby. So now 24 years later, they done found the person who was the baby who was raised and told that their, um, you know, they didn't have a mother, that their parents abandoned them. Um, and now they found their family, Julius Malema. So people know about, I'm out of the loop. I'm out of a lot of loops. So I guess I shouldn't be surprised. I shouldn't be in shock and awe. So they find that found their daughter after 24 years search. Um, so that's deep. Bridal gown designer, um, on Sa um, Saleh Abera dies at 64. 64 is really young to be dying. She said that in the 80s when she wanted to get like a wedding dress that like the style was like big and poofy and extravagant or whatever and she wanted something more understated and elegant so she designed it and that started her business. But she was, I think she was Ethiopian. So anyway, um, you know, for those who are into bridal gowns, her family is going to continue the business. We were talking yesterday about how people spend the average is $30,000 on a wedding. So spend, if you're going to spend that money, spend some with this family and this designer. Wow, everybody knows about Julius. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not even clear of the last name. But why can't you do what he's um, Malema? Yay. Thanks, Grace. Thanks, Brother Ayapo. Welcome, um, Grace, to the chat. Thank you. Um, why can't you do what he's doing over there, over here? Is there a reason? You know, are you asking the questions? Are you pursuing it, Myosha? That sounds beautiful to be inspired by somebody. Um, okay, so we're not alone. <laughs> Grace, we'll have to, I guess we'll have to do the research. Julius Malema, Julius Malema, Julius Malema, Julius Malema. We, I have to remember it to do the research. I guess I could, do I ever play back? And plus we already at an hour and a half. Lord have mercy. Let's keep it moving. Kiki Palmer on battling colorism in Hollywood. I didn't see people with my complexion being shown as beautiful. Tuesday morning's buzz. Remembering Winnie Mandela, Jesus Christ superstar, nabs, ratings gold. I watched on replay like about 15 or 20 minutes and then I just, I was doing other stuff and I was like, I'm not into it. I didn't think I was going to be into it, but I like the idea of live theater on TV, although on TV it's not really live theater, but I was curious. 
but not that curious. Did anybody see it? Was it any good? King's heir still grappling with his killing 50 years later. Not king as in the king of England, but we know April 4th. Is this the anniversary of the death day of Martin Luther King Jr.? Um, and I think not only are his heirs grappling with his death, but I think, you know, I just think that the violence and the, the you know, I think a lot of us are grappling not only with his death, but with the deaths of so many people like I feel like if someone that you love makes their transition sometimes you can like accept it and get peace with it you know you go through like a, a grieving process but sometimes you know like grieving is hard especially you know like you know like you might into we intellectually know everybody ain't gonna be here forever the body is gonna die and I can say that all day and you know but I haven't ever lost anyone close to me so if I lost someone close to me I don't know if I'd be like oh well the body just comes and it goes I might be like oh and y'all might have to pull me out of a corner and be like get up Angela I'll be like no I can't go on I don't know because we don't know how we gonna feel when we experience certain things so I'm not surprised that you know um that it would be hard for his children to um you know kind of process who he was the good, the bad, and the ugly, who he represents, how he's been used. It's a lot of pressure on them, you know. But anyway, I think April 4th is the um, anniversary of um, his 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 um, assassination, execution. Is it an assassination when they just shoot you from afar and then an execution when they be like, I sentenced you to death, Angela, boom. I don't know. But anyway, his killation. So I don't even, the headline said his, oh, his killing, okay. Um, and I really like the idea. I haven't studied much of the, the work of Martin Luther King Jr., but I have heard and gotten the impression that, you know, he was evolving. He was intellectually studying and developing and, you know, um, he was evolving and growing. Um, and I'm a fan for that. I'm a fan of that. You know, I'm a fan for greater sophistication and more deeper understanding of the system. And like, you know, so, you know, what the, I have a dream speech is like, oh, he was he had moved on to thinking about other things and seeing things in different ways as I understand it. Um, Texas woman playing with guns. OK, so let's stop right here. Playing with guns. OK, Texas woman playing with guns shoots man in the head on Facebook live video. Now, this is coming off of the Rio, so I'm going to have to assume that these are black folks. And um, he was definitely evolving. He realized very near the end of his life that integration he had fought for was a mistake. Julius Malema is the oh, the EFF. Yes, as well as a member of the parliament in South Africa. Um, Julius have. Um, OK, yeah, I'm familiar with the economic freedom fighters just here recently, though, because they're the ones that, you know, seem to have some sense in what they're saying when they they like uh, this ain't no complicated thing. This is not day land. So, no, we, you know, let's keep it moving. OK, um, I still want to get those newspapers from um, when my people were in South Africa because they were in South Africa when Zuma stepped down. So they're basically newspapers from every day. But uh, my mother gave them to the person who organized the trip. I'm like, he didn't get his own newspapers. I thought you brought these for me. But when she gave them to me, I was like, uh, this is a lot of papers to be reading. But now I'm like stressed because she has someone else has them. So, you know, maybe I'll learn more about EFF, you know, from it would be interesting to see it. I'm curious to see it from but Julius Malema in the EFF. Yes, I don't think the Africans believe it's going to happen. They think they're going to take the land, give it to the government and continue to oppress them. Yeah, I think there's that is one way of a powerful and elegant speaker. He speaks with passion, but in a total control of himself and his audience and message. Got to run, my sister. But I'm about to finally see Black Panther. Much love and respect. Peace. Thanks for stopping in. <laughs> I know it's been like, we got to go. We can't be on here forever. Um, Texas woman playing with guns shoots man in the head on Facebook Live. So he was kind of like, uh, why are you shooting? Why are you pointing that gun at me? I don't feel comfortable. And they like, ha, 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 it's not loaded. <laughs> and then they killed the man. Or she killed the man. Um, you know, I, don't, I, I just feel like playing and guns don't really fit together. 
Um, so love the info. Um, don't watch my review. I don't want to spoil the movie for you. <laughs> it sounds shady. It might have been shady. I don't know. Um, you know, because the guy apparently the or a, I think one of the guys in the car is like, there's not even a clip in it. And, you know, she said she didn't know it was loaded. But I don't know if I was doing something shady. I don't think I would do it on Facebook Live or YouTube Live. I hope I don't know. But maybe you can't help yourself. You know, when you, you know, model Jordan Dunn talks about her battles with anxiety and depression. We were just talking yesterday about The Rock talking about anxiety and depression or depression. But now we've expanded it to anxiety and just this general conversation of mental health. Um, um, Brother Andres, you were talking about depression of being in jail, literally. And I think the depression of us being, you know, in this situation, feeling like we're caught up. You know, that's like, that's, it's like we're caught up. How do we get out? How do we get free? How do we live our best lives? How do we build community? How do we win this? How do we, you know, if we've won it, how do we stay encouraged? How do we, you know, like, so how do we keep ourselves mentally and emotionally and spiritually healthy and fit and strong? And how do we build our emotional and spiritual and intellectual, you know, strength and health and fitness? Filmmakers highlight the complexity of modern marriage for women in India. I skipped breakfast for three weeks. Hope for the future. Yeah, I think of children actually doing it on Facebook Live serves as an excuse, i.e. I wasn't really planning to kill them. I wouldn't do it on Facebook Live. I don't know. I just feel bad whether you was planning to kill somebody or not. I just feel like killing somebody is very serious. Like, I feel like it's very serious for your spirit. Um, and, you know... That's what I was thinking of Yapo. So I feel like if they were planning to do it, that's sad. If they weren't planning to do it, that's sad. Just the whole situation, you know, and then I feel kind of bad because the person was not feeling comfortable. Like it wasn't like they were all just playing around and then he got killed when he was like, ah, 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 boom, he's dead. He was already feeling a certain way when he was, you know, so it's like, uh, but may he rest in peace, um, you know. I skipped breakfast for three weeks and it made me save money, drink more water, eat less and crave healthier food. Some people are sneaking and calculating like that. So this article was saying that the whole breakfast is the most important meal of the day is propaganda from the cereal industry. I don't know. I saw that and I thought it looked like an, ex an accident. Hey, Fab S. Wiseman. Hey. Um, France strike real misery is three month action test Macron. So two days a week and they got a schedule of when they're going to be striking. So they, you know, the, the public workers are having strikes. Now this whole European thing and how they do the strikes, it seems like they're really serious about it. But Macron said he about to break this whole culture of strikes in, 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 um, in France. So I don't know. Germany's fighter jets may not be fit for NATO service. And it's the latest setback in a wider problem. They might not want to be spending their money on, um, you know, military stuff. But then the, they, they buddies are like, you got to be up to par with us. Like, you know, I don't want to spend my money on, you know, uh, uh, flexing. What is it called? You know, like, I just want to get clothes from the Goodwill. And your buddies are like, look, you can't be hanging with me in them Goodwill clothes. You got to go and get the latest fashion. And then you be spending your money on stuff you don't want to be spending it on. That's what I think NATO is like. They like, dang, because they all buddies. Now they got to spend all their money on the same thing the same way. But then how you going to have if, if I if you got a, a your fist and I got a gun, how you going to have my back if we go into a fight? But you might be able to use your fist real good. I don't know. TCM honors Cicely Tyson with hand and footprint ceremony. TCM, I think, was something movies, Turner Classic Movies, because I looked it up. I'm like, what does TCM stand for? So, yay, Mama Cicely Tyson. Denmark unveils first ever monument to black woman. The woman's name was Mary Thomas. She was one, we talked about this two weeks ago, the fire burn riot somewhere in the Caribbean or the fire burn. And I was like, yes, let the fire burn. I love that. My mother said her, she's a Thomas. That's our family, my family name. I'm like, what, Thomas? Her name is Mary Thomas. I have a cousin named Mary Thomas. A small but grown, so they, it's a monument to somebody who fought against, um, you know, the enslavement of black folks in they, uh, one of their colonies. 
Um, I don't know if she's related or not. But yes, we're spiritually related because she's a rebel and I'm a rebel. And I'll burn that shit. Excuse me. I will burn that stuff down. Don't play with me. I don't know if I will or not. But I like to believe that I will. I aspire to uh, burn it down. Burn it down. <laughs> a small but grow Because all it takes is a match. You know what I mean? A small but growing movement of doctors that don't accept insurance and charge a monthly fee could be a model for big employers like Amazon <laughs> and J.P. Morgan. Don't tell anybody I said that. I'm not going to burn anything down. Okay, so look, I walked yesterday, Monday. I walked yesterday, today, and the day before, so about 45 minutes. So I'm back. You know, the weather is breaking. I'm back on, you know, my dog is going to make me go out. Or I let her make me go out. And then yesterday I had 64 ounces of water. How much water did you drink yesterday? You got your water by you? Go get some water. Drink some water. Um, I drank 64 ounces of water. And then I had six servings of fruits and vegetables. At least, you know. Because I pulled out a little, um, I have a little glass, like little glass bowls that I like to use for stuff. And one of them is like a cup. And I pulled it out. I'm like, a cup is so small. Because a cup, they say a serving is a cup. And I, in my head, a cup is big. So I was like, oh, that's really small. So my six is a generous six. But I had one apple, one grapefruit. I drink a lot of water. That's excellent. I'm so glad to hear that. Five plus dates. Um, and then I made a veggie stew. Um, I did good yesterday. Yay! Five dates later and then two raw carrots. So I'm trying to... Uh, yay! I'm trying to, uh, I'm, you know, today I'm behind because I've only had like eight ounces of water and some dates. And it's like four o'clock. So I'm going to have to just, I can't multitask. See, I had said, oh, I should bring my water here. But um, but anyway, that's that's where I was. So, um, dang, and then I came out of the thing. Here I am trying to rush and hurry up. I need to drink more water. Oh, I brought sparkling water. I love sparkling water. No meat yesterday too. Woo! Whatever it is you're working on, I support you. I like, I don't, there's this thing like uh, um, that they use in cocktails is sparkling, but I don't like it. Like a soda water or I like sparkling mineral water. Um, so, um, but what kind of sparkling water do you like? I like, like Pellegrino is a good brand I like, but um, I really like Spa Red, which you can't really get in this country. Today I had grapes, pears, and bananas. Yeah. Oh, I should make a smoothie. Yay, you got this. Go ahead. That's what I'm talking about. The good news report. What other good news do we have? Any other good news? Anything exciting? What are we doing in our communities to add value? Uh, as asked by Brother Yapo on some day the other day. I'm getting into the water with a slice of lemon, but I have to get used to no sugar. But I will. Yeah, you will. You are. You are. You're already used to it. Um, filmmakers highlight the complexity. Okay, I think we're we're back almost. I was trying so much to hurry up that I left before I was finished. Um, Nestle Michigan permit water withdrawal. So Nestle is a big corporation that takes water out of Michigan. I think out of... I'm having Chipotle for dinner. I never got into Chipotle. Um, so they they just let Nestle, the corporation, do whatever they want to do with the water. And then meanwhile, people in Flint haven't had water since, what, 2014? Good, wholesome, pure, uh, first world water. And the whole cut off the sugar for three days and you will no longer crave it. You hear that, brother? Did you hear that? I love this broadcast. There's always some kind of action. All right. Yeah, we try. Yeah, that's what that's. OK, yeah, let's try that. Let's let's focus on that. What's working, what we doing well, what we see in this, 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 you know, productive. What's what's our good news? What are our notes on the news? Um, Panera Bread. I got a big bag of sugar that's been here for three years. Yes. And then when you have mess, it's like, do you give it away to the other people? Because then you just like, are you encouraging them to do the mess? I don't know what to do with the mess. Panera Bread left millions of customer records exposed on the web. But fruit sugar is okay. If it's in the context of fruit, 
I feel, but I feel like even then, you know, bitters are important. Um, yay, that's exciting. Stevia is a good answer. Do you eat dates? Dates are really sweet. I like dates. Um, when I was the first time that, or one of the first times that I was trying to um, eat dinner, coconut sugar, sugar is better for you. One of my um, sisters told me that um, um, sesame seeds help to break a sugar craving. And then my mother told me that amino acids, like I don't deal with Bragg's aminos too much because I read some article that freaked me out. But she started doing Bragg's aminos and she said that that helped to break her sugar craving. And also if you do... I don't know if you do or not, but if you do white rice and white potatoes and, um, you know, white bread, that can stimulate, you know, that's that's part of that whole sugar stimulation, craving, continuum, consumption. So try to minimize though or maximize whole grains and um, stuff like that. Ratings, heavens for NBC's live Jesus Christ superstar, um, super, superstar. Folks are outraged as angry white man shoots Shouts racial racial slurs slurs at black footballer traveling home from church. These people will will be angry and and yell at you and try to kill you and kill you even when you're in church praising God. What kind of people are these? I have an apple cider vinegar mixed with a little um, honey. They say that apple cider vinegar is supposed to be a real uh, powerful thing. Reaping, yeah, because carbs break down into sugar. Well, in the refined carbs, I think, have a whole different, you know, interaction with your system. Um, reaping the wind with the biggest turbines ever made, it will keep you from getting diabetes. Angela Rye drops much-needed history lesson on CNN guests who pointed out black officers are guilty of police brutality, too. They part of the system. We already we already talked about this. We're not gonna go on. Philadelphia police officer opioids more deadly to blacks than gun violence. All kinds of drugs and BS are. Sacramento Sheriff releases new video showing the moment a police SUV hit a 61-year-old protester. U.S. immigration judges told to process 700 cases a year. Now, some people are like, that's gonna cause all mess and confusion. Oh, does he? Dr. Africa is the one that doesn't believe that women have um, periods or is that African holistic health? Oh, that's African holistic health. I don't know who that's by. I don't know. Um, Black WWE star demands apology from Hulk Hogan for his racist rant. Um, I like vinegar on my hair, but some people say that vinegar... Dang. Dang, boo-boo, and they ain't got boo-boo. So forget about them. What do you have? Who are you? Yeah. It's kind of amazing. And like, you know, when you see the mind game and the BS for what it is, it's, it's just kind of like, wow. It's like on one hand, you have this. And then on the other hand, we black. Like, it don't, how are we even in a conversation just from a point of understanding? Yeah, how are we even... You know, it just seems like it should be so, it could be so obvious to us, you know? So we have to continue to, and like, I feel like the whole nutrition conversation is part of it too, because you know, when you're, um, we were talking about this yesterday, my old show, you feel better, but like certain things are like drugs and your, your thinking, your ability to think and analyze and process and, you know, and my mother was saying the other day about that model. I can't remember her name, but she's like, she stopped eating meat and she ain't thrown a cell phone at nobody that we've heard of since then. But, you know, certain things affect how you feel. Like some people say that, you know, when you eat meat, you can be more violent when you, you know, things just affect you. And then that sugar has such a, a it's not a positive legacy for our people spiritually, you know, um, they think we'll revolt and kill them. And some people might say, as well, we should. I'm not saying that I'm saying that, but some people might say that. Um, Costa Rica. Yeah. <laughs> 
Costa Rica elects first vice president of African descent. Um, pastor with ties to Obama and Bush turns himself in after being accused of Chinese bond scheme. Police beat black man as he pleads for his life. Why are you punching me, Naomi Campbell? Right. They say, you know, I don't, I didn't know she had stopped eating meat, but you know, she's supposed to be acting more sane since then. Um, why are you attacking me? This white panelist is quickly destroyed after attempting to play the victim. And I thought these two articles were really interesting because this man was literally being attacked and he's saying, why are you punching me? This woman, somebody like didn't treat her like, oh, you're so great and white and smart and I'm just nothing in black, but was just treating her like up here. We having a conversation. Why are you attacking me? You know, they just expect you to be so like docile and like beat down that if you're not, they feel like they're being attacked. Um, so I thought those two up against each other, like when they talk about being attacked, dang, who, who attacking them? What are they talking about? Facebook promises to delete unpublished videos. Fabulous gets love from crowd at Lil' Kim concert after video surfaces of rapper making threats to girlfriend. Oppressors playing victim. Ha! What a joke. Um, black photographers land um, six-figure deal showcasing natural black hair. Winnie Mandela on her and Nelson's struggle. Store clerk chases teen, guns him down over a can of beer. And that's not even the most disturbing part. The most disturbing part, according to this article, is that the store clerk knew this child. This child uh, got shot on the street in his thigh and he laid on the street and died to death. The store clerk never called anybody to say, I shot somebody. It was a robbery, you know, a beer. Um, and I shot somebody over it. And if he had, that child might have lived. So this is like your neighborhood, you know, here when I was growing up, we used to say Arabs. But this is like your neighborhood, you know, store. This is how they treat the people in the neighborhood. we're chosen in the most high um seven fascinating facts about the late south african activist no um, winnie mandela israel suspends plans to send african migrants west former nba great charles barkley donates two hundred fifty thousand dollars toward black history education in alabama and mississippi martin luther king's last speech to be read in boston different people are going to read different parts i thought that was really interesting the situation in san francisco sinking skyscraper is so dire that the most expensive condo has been sold for one million dollars under the asking price i wonder who bought it north carolina police shooting claims life of black man riding as vehicle and passenger so um as v as passenger um in vehicle so rest in peace to him um, running water is a luxury and not a right to um, the residents. So I'm curious, um, too little, too late, Charlie. Who's Charlie? Oh, Charles Barkley. <laughs> I'm curious about what some, we're finished now. So if you came for the news, it's done. But I'm curious about what some people's strategies are for separation. Like in your own personal life, you know, what are some of the things that you do to separate yourself? Now, I guess my immediate thought or, you know, when I think about that immediately, I think like, you know, if I'm separating myself mentally, then I want to make sure that I am. Um, if I'm separating from something, to what am I connecting? To what am I attaching myself? To what am I identifying? And so, you know, am I having images around me in my space that are a reflection of what I connect with, what I identify with, what I value? So when I go in my home, is my home, you know, reflecting? Um, we don't come for the news. We come for the notes on the news feed. So, um, you know, is am I a reflection of being connected to myself? How can I be more a reflection of being connected to myself? When people look at me, when I look at myself, when I look at my life, when I look at my choices, like where do I choose to go on vacation? With whom do I choose to spend my money? Are these things ref a reflection of me connecting more deeply and more intimately with my people? 
I don't want to talk about separation. I want to talk about connection because I feel like what separation does in my mind is it's like separation from them. And it's like the vibration is them, them, them. And so I want to talk about connection with us and how how are we connecting more deeply with ourselves so that's, you know, that's the question. You may not have, you know, the answer at the moment. You know, I want you, I just want to encourage you to look around, you know, your life and see, you know, the ways in which you're, you know, more deeply tying yourself and connecting yourself to, to us, to our people, to our culture, to our values. And the things that you're connecting with, the things that you're attaching to, are they a reflection of, you know, your values or our people and what we say is our love for our people and our love for ourselves. Can we see, can you see the self-love? The other nations understand separation is on YouTube. Most of the family, most of my family is lemmings. So yeah, are the videos that you're watching, are they a reflection of your connection with yourself? My day is filled with actions of separation. Separation is for me a mental is mental at this point, not connecting my sensibilities to what other people connecting to my own blackness. So how are you mentally connecting to your own blackness? You know, is it in what you're reading? Is it in what you're watching on YouTube and on the television? Is it in who you're talking to when you look at the people that you're spending time with and the time that you're spending, you know, how you're spending your time? If you were to look at the hours of your day, can you see in the hours of your day a reflection of that value system? Now, you know, I have a, um, are you running for Congress in the low? <laughs> uh no, absolutely not. Um you know I have a um Oh, uh, yeah, I'm glad you're not saying cuz I want to just say black. You know, um when I was when I worked with young people, someone pointed out to me that when you work with kids and you say, "Stop running!" All the children here is running, 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 running. And I feel like that's how we are too. We have to affirm what we want, not disaffirm what we don't want. That's probably a double, triple negative. But like, so if you want the children to walk, then you tell the children to walk. And that's how you get the children to walk. You acknowledge. I see Mary Smith. She's sitting down. Good job, Mary. I see Johnny. He's sitting down. And then the other children are like, well, I want Miss Angela to see me. Okay, I see Angela, she's sitting down. So instead of being like, you're standing, you're standing. So that's why I'm choosing. It's not because I'm afraid of the concept of separation. It's because I'm choosing to, let's go beyond just the separation. What happens after the separation? When I ran youth programs and we we're like, we don't want the kids to get pregnant. We don't want the kids to get on drugs. We don't want the kids to drop out of high school. I remember one child seeing them and he like 18 hanging out at the community center. He ain't on drugs. He ain't got nobody pregnant. He graduated from high school. But why he hanging out at the community center? We have to have a vision bigger than what we don't want. We have to have a vision that is what we want. Who are we? So it's not that I'm afraid of the word separation. I just want to encourage us to think about what we're connecting to. Okay, we separated. Now, what are we connecting to? That's so that's all. That's it. Just something to think about. Maybe it doesn't make any sense to you, but it makes perfect sense to me. But I've been on this thing talking for two hours. <laughs> I had to separate because of religion. It's like a glass that is filled with milk and it was filled with water. I put it under the faucet and fill it with water until it comes clear. Yeah, I like the metaphors, but I'm just asking for, I'm just encouraging us to think very concretely and to share um, very concretely what we're doing personally. You know, maybe not share, you know, maybe it's private. I don't know, but um, you know. Like for me, you know, st when I stopped perming my hair, um, you know, that was, you know, an affirmation of like, well, the way, you know, and my hair is gray and that's just, that's how it is. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. I love it. And if you don't, that's on you, but I'm connected to it. I embrace it. I celebrate it. I, it's mine. <laughs> it's fabulous, you know? Um, so that's connecting more deeply to who I am and valuing, you know, who I am as God created me. Um, through time with our people, like right now and continual study of our people, unlearning and learning, greeting fam, build it, fix it, do it with Jay Wade. Are you a carpenter? Build it, fix it, do it. Oh, maybe you're a carpenter of people. Um, so anyway, we finished, we've been on here forever. 
um, not forever, but yeah, com how, and I can tell, um, brother Yapo, or I don't know, but you know, you def, I definitely get the feeling in how you, the sincerity with which you seem to interact with people seems to be really like, um, like a high quality interaction. You know how some people, all of the comments we make, we'd be like, good video. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Smiley face, but you'd be like, and I just did this, did, you know, it's like you can, you really feel the engagement. Going against the status quo is an act of defiance to dominant society. I love it. Yeah, but also I feel like going for our people is an act of defiance. Um, so how can we go for our people? Look, my battery is dead. So um, that's it. You know, I'm still on the... Oh, shoot. My little fancy LG thing has this extra battery thing that I just plugged on. But... um. Your broadcasts are always excellent, but this has been an exceptionally good one. All right. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm just kicking it with y'all. I appreciate it. It's good. It's good to think about. I enjoy the stimulation and the challenge. And I've really been thinking about, wow, you know, is this virtual community? Do I need to, you know, because you're like, what are you doing in your community? I'm about to do drawing classes. I'm like, well, I, I, I'm, I do. I, I don't know. You know, I've really been thinking about it. Like. So, um, you know, I enjoy, you know, I'm really enjoying, you know, I'm enjoying it's, it's good. It's stimulation. It's challenging. And it's just actually just awesome and amazing. Like, I don't know who y'all are, where I meet y'all at. I just think this whole uh, digital thing is like, I just think it's, it's amazing. Um, you know, I don't know. Like, I don't, I, I, yeah. And, and did the YouTube algorithm connect us is that like that's deep to me like that's really really deep to me because i don't know if if somebody told me to go to a yapo yapo i don't know how this it's just like you know and all you know other people it's like just through the algorithm it seems like i get connected some people are referrals you know but um like poetry she came here we spent time we kicked it but i think that i just met her through youtube that's weird that's very but I mean, how do we meet any people anywhere? Continually work on for the benefit of our people. Yes, and for the benefit of ourselves and our families. But um, that's it. Thank you all for being here. If you're coming in just now, you can watch the replay or part of the replay. <laughs> just put the replay on while you're doing something else. Technology opens the world. It's awesome. It's amazing. And I mean, I feel like so distrustful of it, but... I don't know. Because I feel like, how do I know who you are? You could be anybody. I want to do for, more for my community, too. We can talk about doing more for the community. I'll have to watch the replay then. Like, how do I know? Like, y'all aren't agents. But, like, some, you know, like, I feel like there have been people. It's like it's 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 something that transcends technology to me. Like, y'all could be agents. I don't know. But I just go by how I feel. Um, and, you know, it's some people that I really, really, I'm like, Wow, it's it's some people that I would never meet just walking down the street who are, you know, I'd be like, did they put out a video? <laughs> Feeling. But anyway, that's it. <laughs> Let us go. So think about the good news for tomorrow. What 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 good news you want to report? <laughs> what positive things be you? Be fabulous. Be fabulous you. Yes, I hope to be. You are. Claim it. Don't hope to be. Put it in the present tense. You are. I am. We are positive um, change agents for our people and for our community. We are. We are adding value. We're adding love. So be you. Be fabulous. Be fabulous. You. Today is the best day ever and you are the greatest. Peace. Peace.